the purpose of coming to the Fanlin area, which uh, is a very disadvantaged area in many ways, was really to um, research some insights into health provision into the area. So basically I'm trying to capture some of the most important things happening in rural areas and especially about um, health issues at the moment. Uh, and every year I have to um, make a, um, a report to the Prime Minister and indeed go and see him and say, I've been to the Fenland, this particular area, we concentrated on health issues, health provision. These are the things we picked up which we believe you ought to be listening to. In this particular area, what are the particular challenges around in rural areas and, and, and rural settlements for health issues, would you say? We, we get left out because of Cambridge being in Cambridge. Cambridge is a sponge. Yes. And will be presumably increasingly so yeah. yes. as it grows yes. and yes. develops. And, and the new we plans. suffer proportionately. Okay. Okay. Cambridgeshire, if you look at it statistically, we've got uh, yeah, a, a relatively affluent and a relatively healthy population. Uh, if you look at averages, we've got um, you know, good mortality rates. Uh, people live longer, uh, live healthier. There are some pockets of Cambridgeshire that really uh, are not in that sort of situation. In terms of life expectancy, you can expect to live six years longer in South Cambridgeshire. Um, you can expect uh, in Fenland who um, have quite low educational attainment. Um, you can expect to be unhealthy for quite a lot of your time. Um, you can expect to have a poor diet. Um, you smoke a great deal and feel ill more often than um, anywhere else in the county. Each year when we look at our figures and look at our diabetes, our hypertension, our ischemic heart disease, etc. And the inspectors look at our quality outcome framework figures and they say, and why are you 20% above the national average for all these diseases? Well, I mean, that reflects local population. It reflects the population is older. It reflects the population, unfortunately, is more obese. Yeah. Uh, and they they're, have not led healthy lives in terms of their smoking, drinking, etc. But the disease is there, and we're coping with it. But we're coping with it with far fewer resources than everybody else is. Mm. Compared to our colleagues um, in Cambridge, we have about 50% of the provision of district nurses, and yet we have a very large rural area to cover. Unless you know a map of the fence in particular, but also in Huntingdonshire, there's always a dike or a river. And yes. the poor old district nurse, you see, she's supposed to go from A to B, and it's bad enough it was probably 15 miles. By the time she's got to wherever she's going, she's probably done 25. I mean, the real issue about uh, rural areas is accessibility, whether it's to the health service, to transport, or anything. I mean, that's, it is the real, real issue. In this area, you can't assume that the people have got two cars. No. Because a lot of people haven't got two cars, and mm. the person that isn't at work, most usually the woman, is going to be left stranded. stranded. Yeah. My wife had cancer, and initially she was treated at King's Left. The appointment was for 9 o'clock in the morning, travelling 45 miles from Wisbeach in the rush hour to an appointment at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Not very conducive to good health and well-being and I feel sorry for anybody who has to travel that distance with a loved one who is seriously ill. I thought there was a gathering over consensus around funding and it comes to no surprise that we um, in the Fenland it is very close to Cambridge and Cambridge if you like sucks in all the money it's a very rich area it's a very growing area one of the problems, of course, is that um, funding in this area is actually quite below um, national averages. Uh, Cambridgeshire has not been well treated over the years in terms of, of, of funding, um, what's the reason and particularly for, that? for the rural areas. So the historical budget, so when they've provided a new service and you, the money's been allocated, they tend to keep it. Um, whereas when they've come to allocating budgets for, for this area in Fenland, They've always said, oh, oh, we haven't got enough money yet to do that. So it never happens, so we never get anything. So our funding level is well below a lot of our colleagues. The AIDS with the highest growth rate over the next 
20 years is the elderly. The people over the age of 65 are forecasted to grow at 20%, which is higher than any other age group in Cambridgeshire. And that's partly because of the current population, but partly because of people buying into the area. Mm -hmm. But the funding formula works by, um, the, the, the first cut is on social demographics, and the second cut is on age. Mm -hmm. And for the life of me, I cannot work out what the difference is between a poor frail elderly person and a better off frail elderly person who need access to the health services. The funding needs to be looked at again and how much funding goes into some of the more disadvantaged areas. Secondly there was a great um, consensus around certainly the medics I think that they wanted some stability and that change is okay on the one hand and, uh, and perhaps a lot of change is good from time to time but to work out some, some delivery parts uh, and points to the health service in rural areas, you need a bit of stability. I think there, there are huge opportunities for our patients with a lot of what is happening and huge opportunities for the services that we can provide. Um, I think the important thing is that the pace of change is suitable. Sometimes initiatives aren't necessarily given the time to flourish. When you're t changing hugely complex systems, whether that be farming or, or health, it takes a while for things to come through particularly yeah. when you've had other things going on, the reorganisation of the primary care trust, for example, right. put, put practice-based commissioning back nine months to 12 months. Um, and we're only now starting to, to bed down again with the new PCT. Right. The government have got to, if you like, let go and allow local people to solve their own local <coughs> problems in their own way and not interfere. I'm very glad that you, you, you've been to Dodd and <coughs> Ramsey because you'll have got a, a flavour of, of how uh, the, the local GPs and, and, and the health services try to respond to the challenges that they put in their locality. And, and that's something that I think we'd like to impress back on the Darcy Review, but it is, um, especially when you get into rural areas, there are different answers. For di there isn't just one template. It's, it does need, uh, it needs local clinicians, it needs district councils and it needs patients and the, and, the, and the community to kind of fashion that. Um, basically the services we provide do meet the needs of the local population yeah, yeah. but we're also reviewing our services to make sure that we can fit in with any other aspects of that. So it, again it's working with GPs and um, actually delivering service that the public want. Some work beginning to happen through Cambridgeshire together on planning across uh, all the all the different bodies, the district councils, uh, the, the roads, education, uh, health, um, housing, because housing in the end is an integral part of all of this as well, especially when you're talking about the elderly. I'm, I, I don't know how effective it will be, uh, but I sit on Cambridgeshire together and um, there is definitely a great deal of willingness in that body to try and make it happen. And it's the smaller providers who are actually the local ones mm -hmm. who need some help yeah, right. in order to frame their bids yeah. or, to, or to get them put together in a partnership. That's right. And they also, as you say, work, have, need to work in partnership these days with each other, I think. The major players are, are fine. They've been around for a long time, for a long, lot of years, and they've got a proper management structure which supports mm. them. The little groups that set up in villages to do small pieces of community work are completely lost. Mm. We've done ourselves a bit of a disservice in having, having a, a health agenda and a social agenda in two separate camps, mm. and, the, and mm. that very much follows who's going to pay for it. Mm. And I think the sooner we bring those together and, and look at, at that particular group of people who do have health and nursing needs that, and should be met by the NHS, but often don't get them met by the NHS because they're deemed as continuing care and a social need. And you know the community, the local hospital facilities, or the more local hospital facilities could well be used to facilitate that, I think. But again, it's about who's going to pay for it. I think I expected to find at, at Doddington some elderly GPs, really. So I was totally surprised to um, come across two very exciting young doctors, uh, full of ideas, brimming with ideas, of trying to um, look at the health provision and the health service from a very different point of view and, and saying, you know, we are where we are in the position of the NHS and how can we really, from a financial position, 
and also from a patient provision, really push out the, uh, the frontiers of medicine. I thought that was fantastic. The idea is that if you set up a community interest company, then you provide health as a company, just like a general practice yeah. as a company. Anything that you make that in in efficiencies is a, is a profit, but you reinvest that into the community. Right. That's, that's the, the, the vision yep. behind it. It's actually quite simple because what the PCT do, or what PCTs are being encouraged to do, is to commission services. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they would be our commissioners. So right. they would say, we want you to provide general practice, physiotherapy sure. services, etc., etc., etc. And this is what we're, you know, we negotiate how much money you get for doing that. And that, that, would, be, that would be it. I think one of the doctors was trying to explain um, some initial thinking, and it is initial thinking really, of how to put a package together which would continually to benefit the patients rather than going into the organisation and often the money would be um, lost around the organisation. When we went to the hospitals and we met the friends and the volunteers who were working in the hospital and the great plea last night that the voluntary in the community sector often known as the third sector can actually play a very vital part in, uh, in, in the, the running of health provision in, uh, in rural areas. I've taken uh, people to hospital for, for treatment. We take them and wait for them and bring them back. We take some of the uh, MS sufferers to uh, Thorpe Hall, which is Peterborough, for daycare. If they dial a ride, we can, we can take them to the surgeries, which we do. And uh, if they want to pick a prescription up, we'll take them in to pick a prescription up. All our buses are wheelchair adaptable, so we're really the only service they can use, uh, apart from the NHS, NHS ambulances, but uh, we pick up the extras, you know. There's no uh, local bus services around the area, so they would probably have to get uh, friend relations to take them in by motor car. Somehow we have to hold a balance and have a balance between what can be provided locally in medical care, in the medical centres for example. And the Ramsey Health Centre was a very interesting one we also visited yesterday. It seems to me that the better way to think about it, and this is where we are beginning, Chris and I and the people around this table are beginning to think when we talk about service redesign, is how, how, how we can design it in such a way that the services are much closer to people's homes, to where they live, to where they want to be, to their community. And that might mean getting um, uh, you know, consultants out of hospitals into GP practices, and obviously GPs visiting more. So it seems to me there is quite a strong message in that coming together. We've been very active in this area with practice-based commissioning. We were one of the first consortium. So we've actually set up a lot of services um, and been quite early in the game. We set up in 2005. Um, with the help of the Improvement Foundation, we've developed quite quickly. And uh, we've moved a lot of things out. We've now got, for example, we've moved the, the INR service where patients have to go 25 miles into Huntingdon to get their blood test done. We've actually now do that in the surgery on Monday. Um, and the INR nurses come out to us, which means it seems to make a lot more sense. Um, the other advantage, of course, is we've then got a complete record of what's sure. happening to the patient. Um, whereas previously we were unaware of that because it was a, a more disjointed service. Mm. Uh, so mm. we've got, um, they get an instant result on the day. Cambridge has got so much potential and it's got some really great ideas and uh, you know I think our aspiration is that um, not only does the Strategic Health Authority want the East of England to be providing long term the best health care in England, we actually want Cambridgeshire to be to be delivering the best and not going to be, not there yet, but we will be. They are pushing out the boundaries of what can be delivered locally and more and more can be delivered locally if people are creative and I thought that was one of the most creative things for the future. <laughs>